Good morning, Doctor. How are you? Good morning. I'm good. What are we talking about today? We're talking, we're continuing our myth series. Okay. So <laughs> now we're going to do busters. myths about diabetes medications. Okay. All right. What, what is, tops that list? One is I don't have to take medicine for diabetes if I stay on my diet. Oh, really? Okay. That's so. one myth. Everybody thinks that. I'll just lose 10 pounds and get off medicine. Now, sometimes that happens. I'm not saying mm -hmm. this is always true, but everybody thinks that. You have to realize that once you actually get diagnosed with diabetes, half mm -hmm. your ability to make insulin is gone forever. So, that doesn't, it means that your pancreas is just half functioning. It's not mm -hmm. functioning as well as it used to. It used to make a lot of insulin and now it's not able to do that. So you need to help it as long as possible and you need to preserve it. And if you let it go and don't take medicine, your sugar goes up, your pancreas uh, dies quicker as far as the cells making insulin die off. So the pancreas continues to die off quicker if your sugar stays high. That's why you need to get, get your sugar well controlled. You don't need to let it hang around mm -hmm. um, 200 all the time. And people say, well, 200 is normal for me. No, it's not. Uh, 200 is not normal for anybody. Mm -hmm. Even if you're 90 years old, it's not normal. So um, you need to preserve your pancreas. And that's what we're trying to do with medicine. We're trying, the new medicines now tend to help out earlier in the course of the diabetes so the, di so the pancreas doesn't wear out. Uh, now, even weight loss surgery, though, doesn't mean necessarily that you get off your medicine. I mean, it, it's possible. It's I mean, possible. if you're on insulin and you lose a lot of weight, you're probably going to get off insulin. You may or may not get off other things, and it may be um, foolish to think that depending on how your pancreas is working. If you've had diabetes for 20 years, you have weight loss surgery, you may not be able to get off everything. Okay. Um, but I think the surgeons tell everybody that. But it, it depends. It depends on how well your pancreas is working. If your pancreas can keep up with a lower weight, uh, that's okay, but sometimes it can't. Okay. All right. What's another myth? That um, if medic medication controls your blood sugar, you can eat whatever you want. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. There you go. So it's a free pass. This is a common. You get our jail free card. <laughs> this is a common misperception for all medicines, not just diabetes medicine, cholesterol medicine. People think they can eat steak every night if they're taking cholesterol medicine because it'll help the cholesterol go down. And same mm -hmm. way with diabetes medicine, especially people on insulin, um, they think they just take more insulin uh, when they eat something. Well, there's going to be problems with that. The medicine, none, no medicine can work perfectly. If you're taking medicine for a congestive heart failure and you eat at McDonald's every day and, mm -hmm. and increase that salt load on your body, uh, it's not going to work. The medicines are not going to work. You're still going in congestive heart failure. It's the same way with diabetes. If you overload your system with starches and sugars and you, you know, the medicine's not perfect. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, I mean, you just can't take a bunch of medicine. I see people that have come in, they're on five or six medicines for diabetes now. Uh, the sugar's still terrible. I'm like, well, let's try diet now. Let's mm -hmm. try something different instead of medicine. You just can't keep adding medications on, on and on if you're not going to follow a diet. And I think once people go on the diet and they realize what they've been doing, sometimes it helps them see that they're not, that the medicines are not perfect, the medicines can't fix it, if they're not going to help out. Mm -hmm. So if you complain about you're on too many medicines, you need to look at your habits and look at needing to eat need to look at what you're eating if you want to get off some medicine. Okay, so uh, that's that's not going to help you uh, just by taking that medicine. I mean, that Avoid, helps. I mean, but it's not going to it's not, <laughs> not going to give fix. you a free pass. Right, it's not going you can't eat whatever you want, sorry. Okay. Now, <laughs> now what about uh, number 3? Um, taking medicines for diabetes has more side effects than diabetes itself. A lot of people blame their medications for other things that happen. Right? I mean, there are side effects from medicine. There's side yeah. effects from everything. There's side effects from not taking medicine. Yes. And I think um, the commercials probably don't help. I mean, mm -hmm. I was just pretty amazed that they were advertising, you know, prescription medicines anyway. But um, they do serve a purpose. It's just that at the end, when they list every single thing that could have ever happened to anybody on mm -hmm. that medicine, including things that aren't related to the medicine itself that just happened when you were in a clinical trial. They list every single thing at the end, even including death and all that. People get a skewed view of what the way medicine works and that not everybody has those side effects. Most people don't have the side effects. If most people had the side effects, they wouldn't be wouldn't have approved the medicine in the first place. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't say what percentage of people have those side effects. It's People don't understand how to uh, look at risk. 
a risk assessment of taking a medicine versus letting the diabetes go uncontrolled. Right, right. And we, we certainly have seen that with any variety of things, vaccinations, of course, and being yes. right up to the top. Yeah, yeah so I think there's a fear factor. The, the uh, media harps on the fear factor all the time. That's how they get more ratings. Mm, sure. I assume that's true in radio, too. <laughs> I don't know. We don't, we, don't, we don't care about ratings here. If you so. can scare people about medicine, they're more likely to listen to your show. But that makes everybody suspicious about all medicines and pharmaceuticals mm -hmm. in general. So, so uh, again, the, the uh, side effects, obviously you have to weigh them. And, and they, they need to, I mean, you need to understand what they can they can be, right? Right, and there's ways of not having side effects from medicine. I mean, if you take metformin, for example, don't start with a full dose the first day. I mean, you're mm -hmm. going to get side effects. So you start with a small dose with food. You don't go up on the dose until you, you realize You acclimate it, to you it. You acclimate to it, and that's true of a lot of diabetes medicines. You have to acclimate to it. Mm -hmm. So some people just say, well, I'm not going to wait all that time. I'm just going to go to the full dose. I mean, you may or may not get by with that, um, but you're, if you don't take it as directed, and take it slowly and gradually go up, you may have more side effects. That's true of cholesterol medicine uh, as well, because if you start off with a high dose of cholesterol medicine, you have, may have muscle cramps, but if you take a little dose, or you take it once a week or twice a week, it still has a beneficial effect, but it doesn't cause the side effects. So a lot of times it's dose related, as far as the side effects from medicine. Now, it seems that with diabetes, a lot of people who are, uh, who are diabetic do some kind of self modification of their methods, uh, of their of their medicine, that, and that seems to be uh, actually somewhat approved, approved of. Well, if a medicine's going to lower your sugar too much, mm -hmm. like um, Amaryl or Glipizide or one of those sulfonylurea drugs that make you make more insulin, and you're not going to eat as much, then you probably should reduce it, and same way with insulin. Mm -hmm. If you're taking insulin at a meal and you're going to eat less, then... Uh, maybe you need to cut back. So we tell people how to do that. Mm -hmm. Some people won't do it, and others have low blood sugars all the time and eat more. Uh, sometimes they like to do that <laughs> so they can have their cookie if their sugar goes low. But um, we tell people that, that they can lower some of the medicines. Now, some medicines, like metformin, you know, once you're on it, you, you need to stay on that dose. Uh, even if your sugar gets better, metformin helps insulin resistance, not blood sugar. Mm -hmm. So even though your blood sugar gets better, the metformin's helping in other ways that you can't measure. Okay, all right, now uh, now number, another one, another myth about medication. Uh, diabetes medicines make you gain weight. Mm -hmm. Now, some of them do. Mm -hmm. Not all of them. In fact, the ones now, and I think that's sort of a standard now that most of the medicines approved now make you lose weight. Mm -hmm. So medicines like Victoza, um, Victoza is actually a diet medicine now called Saxenda. It's just called a different name, and it's a higher strength, but it's a weight loss medicine. So a lot of them help you not be hungry, and the SGLT2s, which are the Farsiga, Imbacana, and Jardiance, pull sugar out of your body. Mm -hmm. So a lot of them help you lose weight now. And um, so the newer medicines, even though they're more expensive, um, they correct a lot of things. Because you don't want to be hungry. If you have diabetes, you don't really want to be hungry. So if you can get rid of the hunger, it's a lot easier to stay on a diet. And that's what the new medicines help with. Yeah, and but then again, you also want to look at the side effects of that, right? Right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right, well, coming up in uh, just a moment, we'll take a look at some of the studies that are out there. Also, Diabetes School is coming up in this month at the aquarium. You want to sign up for that? We'll tell you more about that, too. All you have to do to find out everything you need to know about Lucas Research right now is go to lucasresearch.org, and you can also, from that website, sign up and see if you're a possible candidate for one of the research studies, or you can call for an appointment at 222-5700. That's lucasresearch.org, 222-5700, and back with more of Sugar Talk in just a moment.